Now let's take a look at some multiple choice question problems. A cart is constrained to move along a straight line. A very net force along the direction of motion is exerted on the cart. The cart's velocity v has a function of time t as shown in the graph. The five label points divide the graph into four sections. Which of the following correctly ranks the magnitude of the average acceleration of the cart during the four sections of the graph? So we're going to look at AB, section BC, section CD, and DE. And we're looking um, for the average acceleration, which we know is the change in velocity over change in time. And the change in velocity, we're looking at just the final minus the initial. And on a graph, we're looking at part specifically the slope. But we don't really care about the velocity in between, which is we're interested in the final and the initial. So the slope from A to B is going to be this slope right here. From B to C, it's just this. C to D is that line. And D to E is that line right there. Uh, so I can tell real quickly from B to C that that's going to be a slope of zero. And then from C to D, and we're looking at the magnitude. So I'm not worried if it's a positive slope or negative slope. I'm just looking at the steepness. And this is one, two, three, four. So slope is rise over run. Four divided by two. This gives me a slope of two. Um, negative two, but don't care about the negative for this problem. And this one goes uh, one, two uh, divided by three which is going to be 0.67 rounded. And this one's one, two, three, four. So four over three, and this is 1.3. All right, so here I can see that the biggest is from C to D. Okay, so it's gonna be C to D. And then it's going to be, uh, so my choices could be A or D here. And then the next one is going to be uh, A to B. So which is right here. So C to D, A to, A to B, okay. And the next is going to be D to E. B to C is going to be the least because it's got zero slope. Uh, so the answer is going to be D. So for this answer, what we're looking at, the key thing here is we're looking at the steepness. Question two, for which segment does the cart move the greatest distance? For distance, we're looking at the area under the curve. Uh, if we're looking for displacement, it would it matters if it's a if it's above the horizontal axis or below but in this case we're looking at the distance which is just a magnitude so i'm looking at this area right here this area right here um, and this area right here and this area right here and then also this area right here so i'm trying to figure out uh, which one has the biggest area so I can tell that uh, from D to E, it's not big area. C to D, it's not compared to B. So I'm just looking for A to B and B to C. I'm looking at those boxes, and I can see that uh, A to B has the most number of boxes down there. So that would have the greatest amount of, of distance. Question three. A person driving a car suddenly applies the brakes. The car takes four seconds to come to rest while traveling 20 meters at constant acceleration. Can the speed of the car immediately before the brakes were applied be determined without first determining the car's acceleration? So in this problem, it's helpful uh, to remember that for constant acceleration, that the average velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two. If I move the two over times the average velocity, we get V initial plus V final. In this case, it's coming to rest. So the uh, this number is going to be zero. So can you find the velocity immediately before braking based on the information provided? And the answer is yes, because you can take two times the average velocity. And so the answer is going to be B, yes, by determining the average speed while braking and doubling it. Now, the reason that A is not correct is because if you were to divide the distance divided by the time or um, let's say the displacement divided by the time, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're, this is only going to give you the average velocity, not not the initial velocity that you were looking for. If you did distance divided by the time, that would only give you the average, average speed and not, not the initial speed, which is what we're looking for. Question four, the graphs represent the position x, velocity v, and acceleration a as a function of time t for a marble moving in one dimension. Which of the following could describe the motion of the marble? So you'll notice that the acceleration right here is constant. And so we need a situation where the acceleration is constant. Also, you'll notice that from the position, I can see that 
this is moving the negative direction and then in the positive direction so there is a change in direction and then that uh, in the first half of it it is uh, getting flatter so this means it's slowing down and then the second half it is speeding up so I need a situation where it's moving in the negative direction slowing down and then speeding up in the other direction now um, it cannot my choices are a rolling along the floor and then bouncing off so this bouncing off is going to change the acceleration. B, rolling down one side of the bowl and then rolling up the other side. Once again, the acceleration will be changing. So we, it's not going to be A or B. Rolling up a ramp and then rolling back down. And so this definitely can be the answer. Um, so as the ball is initially going up, it's going to slow down and then it's going to reverse direction and speed up. D, falling and then bouncing, bouncing, okay, so this bouncing part, uh, elastically off a hard floor, the acceleration will be changing, so it can't be that one. So the answer for this one is going to be C. Question 5. Object A is released from rest at height H. At the same instant, object B is thrown downward from the same location. Which of the following graphs of speed V as a function of time is correct for the two objects? So here we're dealing with free fall. And we know that in free fall motion that the acceleration is constant, equal to G, which is about 10 meters per second squared. So it cannot be A because the slope here is different. Um, the, and the slope represents acceleration and so none of these A, C, and D cannot be the correct answer because their slopes are different and the slopes on a velocity graph represents acceleration. So your choices are B and E and it says that they were dropped at the same instant, at the same time. This is not the same time, this is at the same time so the answer is going to be B. Question 6. Observing a safe spacecraft land on a distant asteroid, scientists notice the craft is falling at a rate of 5 meters per second when it is 100 meter closer to the surface of the asteroid. The, crafts report, the craft reports a velocity of 8 meters per second. According to their data, what is the approximate gravitational acceleration on this asteroid? So we have a spacecraft that is falling towards the surface of this uh, asteroid. And we're going to first start with our variables chart. So delta x, vi, vf, at. And we're looking for the acceleration. And we know that it's falling at a rate of 5 meters per second. 5 meters per second. Uh, when it is 100 meters closer to the surface, the craft reports a velocity of 8. So it goes from 5 to 8 meters per second. And this happens over a distance of 100 meters. So using my kinematics equation chart, which I showed you earlier, uh, we can figure out the equation we would use here is the one that without the t. So it's going to be v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. So now I'm going to substitute. If we solve for a, we get that a is 0 0.20 meters per second squared. And so the answer here is going to be answer C, 0.2 meters per second squared. Question 7. A block is released from rest and slides down a ramp. The surface of the ramp has three rough sections where the friction between the surface and the block is not negligible, as shown by the shaded regions. Measuring which of the following will allow for the best estimate of the block's instantaneous acceleration when the block is at the midpoint of the ramp. So we want to remember that the average average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time, which we can also write as v final minus v initial divided by t final minus t initial. Okay, and the instantaneous acceleration, um, even though the acceleration is changing, this average will occur uh, in between the initial and the final uh, velocity. Choice A, the total distance traveled by the block and the total elapsed time. So distance over time, this will not give you the acceleration, this will give you speed. Final speed of the block and the total elapsed time. So this is going to give you the average acceleration of when you start to the end, the final speed of the block. So not necessarily at the midpoint. So we want it 
and we want to find the acceleration and this is not going to give you that acceleration it's not going to be at that midpoint C the distance between the points just before and just after the midpoint and the time it takes for the block to travel them so here we have distance divided by the time once again you're going to end up with the speed and we're not looking for speed the speed of the blocks at the points just before and just after. So this would be VI, VF, the midpoint, and the time it takes for the blocks to travel between them. Um, that would be the answer. That would allow us to find the average acceleration, which would give us the acceleration roughly at the midpoint of that, of that region there.